Yo, 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 it's your boy Luab coming back at it again with another discussion video. In today's video, I want to present you with all the available information we have on Project Mew, as well as some cool insights you might have not yet known about. Project Mew was introduced to the public as an upcoming arc all the way back on April 23rd, 2021, which was two months ago at the time of me writing the script. We got a special preview trailer dropped by the official Pokemon Company Twitter account, detailing upcoming events that are going to be coming to Pokemon Journeys. This included amazing shots of both Iris and Gary, which truly hyped up the community to levels I have not seen in a while. Maybe they should really drop trailers like this every few months when the hype is dying down. <clears throat> now. Regardless, we wouldn't see the start of the Project New Arc until episode 68 of the Pokemon Journeys anime, which introduces us to the whole concept. Professor Oak, after hearing that Go's motivation is to one day catch the legendary Pokemon Mew, informs him of Project Mew and how that would be a great way to fulfill his lifelong dream. Go initially refuses the offer as he wanted to make his dream happen on his own, which is something that Go has had a lifelong problem of. This problem being that he is a loner and often does not ask for help and tries to do things on his own. Well, the plot of this episode has them reuniting with Gary Oak, who gets a feather from Moltres and sends it back somewhere mysteriously. At the end of the episode, we are told that Gary is actually in Project Mew himself and his mission wasn't to catch Moltres but actually to retrieve a feather from it. After confirmation of receiving the feather, he receives a token and he's off forming a rivalry with Go and actually changing the latter's mind to want to participate in Project Mew himself. A few episodes later on we see Go actually going to the Project Mew base and starting his own journey towards one day catching the mythical Pokemon for himself. So basically Project Mew is a task force that will go to Tabletop Mountain, which is a really foggy mountain that they believe that Mew lives on, even though we've seen him all throughout Pokemon journeys in many locations and that's not one of them. There is a one week period between the wet and dry seasons that the fog clears up and that's when they are going to go and look for it. With that long winded backstory out of the way, let's take a closer look as to how Project Mew works and how a trainer can be selected to be part of the final team. So in order to participate in Project Mew, a trainer has to participate in something called a trial mission, which is exactly what it sounds like. Basically, they have an objective that they need to clear within a certain time limit, which as far as we know can be as easy as capturing a Pokemon to as difficult as meeting and collecting an item from a legendary Pokemon. If one is to require an item to be sent back to be verified by the team, a Corviknight, which is owned by Project Mew, can be sent to you and you can send the item back on it. Once the mission is completed and verified by the team, the trainer will then receive a special token on their Rotom phone as proof of them completing their mission. Before you can even be accepted into being part of the regular trial missions though, there is an even more special kind of trial mission to see if you are qualified to be part of Project Mew to begin with, so a trial trial mission? That's what Go got tasked with in episode 71, and it was actually pretty difficult proving how hard it is to actually be a part of this team. At the end of the challenge, assumedly right before that one special week when the mountain clears up fog, the trainers with the most points will become a chaser. They are only accepting 5 chasers with 2 of them already being selected, which means there is room for 3 more to get accepted into this team. It should also be noted how similar these trial missions are to Pokemon Go's field research. Now that we know a little more on how Project Mew works, let me introduce you to the characters that we know now because of this arc. Just to preface this with we haven't had these episodes dubbed yet so the names I'm going to use are based on their Japanese names. They could and probably will be different ones once we get the dub, so just a heads up. At the head of all of this we have a new professor whose name is Hodaka. We don't know much about him yet other than he's totally not evil, right? He does have an adorable assistant Pokemon in Mr. Mime Jr. I'm calling Mr. Mime Jr., he's probably just Mime Jr., who assumedly helps him around the lab and stuff. With every professor having their interest in a different part of the Pokemon universe, Holdoka's focus seems to be on the origin of Pokemon and that is why he's so set on finding Mew. This could be a cool tie-in to Pokemon Legends of Arceus as that game centers around the origin of Pokemon itself. Finally, his name is based off a mountain in Japan. Actually, all the characters from this arc have names with mountain origins. The Hodaka's as well, Mount Hodaka. Next, we have the top chaser as of now and certified badass, Tsurugi. He's a calm and quiet guy who takes his work seriously and is shown to be a very strong trainer as well. As of now, the only Pokemon we see that he has is a Weavile and a Single Strike Urshifu which probably alludes to the fact that he likes Dark types. I know Elite Trainer Mark is happy about that. I assume his Weavile is used for work on the field and his Urshifu takes care of the battling side of things since it was seen to be extremely powerful. His name in Japanese is both a reference to Mount Tsurugi as well as Tsurugi meaning sword so you know maybe a reference to Pokemon Sword. Finally, we have Asahi, which is a Japanese beer brand. She appeared in episode 68 to congratulate Gary and give him the token for completing his mission. She seems to be very hands-on in the mission work as not only did she give Gary his token, but she also briefed Go on his trial mission for the Ninetales. She's a cool trainer and besides Tsurugi, the only known chaser to be confirmed as of yet, so she's probably very good at the missions as well. 
She doesn't have any Pokemon confirmed as of yet, and her name is actually based on Mount Asahi, which is the same name as her, and also a reference to Asahi meaning Morning Sun in Japanese, which could be a reference to Pokemon Sun. As I mentioned earlier in the video, the 5 trainers that accumulate the most tokens will be regarded as a chaser. Since we know which trainers are going to be a chaser for the most part, it's fun to speculate the last 1 or 2 slots. I wanted to give my thoughts on who I wanted to be a chaser, but instead, I'll pass the mic to my good friend, the lead trainer Mark. Hey everyone, it's Mark. Okay, so we already basically know who 4 of the 5 chasers are going to be. Sarugi and Asahi already have their slots locked in, and Go and Gary will surely qualify as well. That leaves 1 slot left. Who could it be? Maybe we'll get a totally new character that joins the crew, or maybe it'll be a returning character from the anime's past. I mean, it may even be Ash for all we know. Obviously, the most fun route the anime could go would be bringing back another character just like they did with Gary. I was really shocked when Gary returned in Pokemon Journeys, and it's awesome that he's going to be such a big part of Project Mew. If the anime wanted to continue down that path, maybe Sonya would be a good pick to join Project Mew. I thought she was a really fun character during the Darkest Day arc, and her and Go had great chemistry together as budding Pokemon researchers. Although, that arc ended with Sonya becoming a professor herself, so would she really join Project Mew? I doubt it. Plus, Sonya isn't much of a battler. To become a chaser, you need to be able to hunt down rare Pokemon, and that requires a certain set of skills. Well, who better in the anime to do that than Hunter J from the Diamond and Pearl series? Okay, I think that's incredibly unlikely too. I mean, as far as we know, J died after her airship crash thanks to the Lake Spirit's future sight attack, and I think there's no way she would ever be brought back into the show. How about someone I actually think would fit this role then? I present and to you, Alon. Now, we know Alon best for being Ash's rival and his history with Team Flare, but before all that, Alon was a Pokemon researcher at Professor Sycamore's lab. I think it would make sense for him to be interested in Project Mew because of his research background, and obviously we know Alon would be strong enough to complete the trial missions. If they brought back one of Ash's old rivals, what's stopping them from doing that again? Thanks, Mark. If you guys haven't already checked out his channel, please do so. A lot of chasers that he mentioned are ones that I would have picked myself, well, except maybe Harrison. We have worked on a few collabs in the past and he makes really amazing Pokemon content as well. I'm sure you wouldn't be disappointed if you gave his content a watch. Let me know which trainers you want to see return from the Pokemon anime to be a chaser in the comments below. So that's Project Mew in a nutshell. I hope that you learned something that you didn't already know about Project Mew beforehand from this video. Since the majority of the arc hasn't concluded yet, I can't wait to see what information we get in the upcoming episodes. I'm really keen to see how the arc concludes more than anything because there are so many possibilities. Is Professor Hodaka evil? Will Go catch Mew? Probably not, but still. Who will the chasers be? Let me know your thoughts on Project Mew and what you want to see from it in the comments below because I really love reading your comments. If you guys made it this far into the video, I truly appreciate you. Feel free to like this video for the YouTube algorithm. It's been your boy Luap, and I'm out. Peace.